Hello all, welcome to another unboxing video, which I didn't know I already had this. That's what happens when you have too much stuff. Uh, I already know this is a, a board game. I ordered, thought I didn't have it. It's a newer, newer version of an old video game board game. Uh, I'm sporting one of my Christmas presents. My wife's aunt sent us money, and so I got myself a Green Lantern sweatshirt, uh, a Green Lantern t-shirt, and a Vampirilla t-shirt with the money she sent me. So it wasn't bad. I got three three things, articles of clothing. Uh, my wife for Christmas, they had the ugly sweaters. And I, there was a Green Lantern one. Came in the mail yesterday. I want to show this to you. Hold on a second. Now, it said sweater. So my wife bought it. And I'm disgusted because it's not a sweater. Got it in the mail. It's a sweatshirt. And I don't think it's worth 65 bucks. That's how much she paid for it. And I love it. Uh, my wife tried looking where, where, where she ordered from and it's gone. And guess what the guy's name was who sent it to me? John Doe. I said to my wife, if that's not a scam, there's something wrong. So, let's see about getting my money back on that. So let's just open this, show you what I got. So all I got coming is a, is a lot of comic books. And uh, this Friday when I get paid, I got to send money to a guy I know. I also have to send some video. I was actually, I still have two video games coming in the mail. I'm waiting. Uh... Jungle Hunt from 5200 and uh, Pro Football City and Television. Oh, this guy has this one. Pretty good. I was going through my my books, and I need five issues to complete 150 run of Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man. So, I ordered a lot that had 245 in. And uh, I didn't notice when I, when I bought the lot that the guy wrote down uh, that 245 is not in good condition. I was like, damn it. So I still need that book. I need two 245... 200, 201, 202, 205, 245, oh, I need six, I need uh, 295, and I'll have from 200 to like 350, 360, uh, for me to finish the 300s, because I think all together was to finish the three, uh, the two and 300s, I need like 30 books, so I was like, I'm going to work on that. I'm also going to work on my Iron Man run from 200 to the end. To the because I think I ended, that ended up in that ended up uh, ending in the in the three somethings. So I'm going to work on them. Uh, I might actually work from Iron Man 150 on up. Um, probably going to afford Devil in a Bottle or to force Thanos. Uh, but here's the game I got. Centipede. IDW game. So, I got a double of it. I didn't know I had because I have them. I had. I didn't know I had it. I, I had no. I had missile command. I thought I needed that, but I didn't because I have out of the new games based on the old uh, uh, video games. I have Pac-Man, Centipede, and Missile Command. And of the original board games that came up based on video games, I have Zaxxon. Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and I need Centipede, Berserk, Pole Position, Centipede, Berserk, Pole Position, okay, Miss Pac-Man, I'm trying to think of what else, because they had, they had a ton of them that came out, oh, q -Bert. But I started boxing up my board games and taking pictures of them. I've been putting the pictures on my Facebook page 
under board games. Because I think that's what I'm just going to do. I'm just going to be able to do that and just so I know what board games I got. Because I boxed up all my double Monopoly games. And I started doing all my uh, Trivia Pursuit games. Between the two of them, I filled the three bo three boxes that were like pretty big. I think the one box I got like seven or eight board games in, fit them in, and then the other one I got probably got like twelve of them in. Didn't even put a dent in what I have he piled up down in the basement. I'm actually running out of room. I uh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in the future though. I keep saying I'm going to open up a run a store out of my house. But I need to add on to my house. When I add on to my house, I won't I won't I won't need to open up a store because I'll have more room to buy stuff. Oh. But I'm doing a trade with a guy on Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna be getting a couple games, and I already have the games put aside for him. I actually gotta wait till I get Jungle Hunt in the mail. Because I'm not giving him my only copy of Jungle Hunt until I get my other copy that's complete in the box delivered because I told him that because that's the only game that I had I've been waiting for but I'll have that complete that trade uh, that trade I'm getting from him uh, a Tron game complete in the box empty boxes for Buck Rogers and Pitfall because I have both those games all I have to do is find the manual for Buck Rogers I'm getting a blue cartridge copy of Pitfall what were the other two games? Oh, Mr. Do. It's 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 rough because I can't remember half the stuff because uh, I'm up to 370 Atari games and I got different versions of the same cartridge. It's like ridiculous. I actually have them all programmed into the, the video game collectors. Uh... There's a guy who posted on the Atari thing. He has this one uh, music something or other, music creator or whatever for 2600. And I love how sneaky people are. Oh, it's not worth that much. I'll give you 20 bucks for it. I sent the guy a PM today. I said, listen, I can't afford it. I need it. It goes loose according to the price charting. The price charting is actually cheaper than if you want to buy eBay prices. Because a lot of the eBay prices are freaking ridiculous. Uh, but it goes for $400. And I sent the guy a message saying, buddy, that's worth a pretty penny. You should be able to sell it for $400. Because I've been now doing the Atari games, and that was the first time I've seen it in a couple years. So hopefully the guy will get my message and be like, yeah. But because the one guy who, who runs the, the page likes to lowball people. Like, oh, it's not... I mean, and then, then he'll brag when he gets the cartridge and like, yeah, I got this for a steal. And I'm like, yeah, you're a scumbag. I, can't, I hate that about some people. It's like, you know what? If you lie to somebody about getting it, I'm up front. I'll be like, you know, this is what it's worth. This is what I'll give you. That's how I am. Uh, the sad thing is, I always said that but stuff is what you expect. Because, like, doing the Atari cartridges, like, I got, like, 12 copies of Combat. I mean, just from buying lots. It's like, there are games out there. A lot of them are, are overproduced. And just to this day, the Atari came out in the, from the 70s, and there's still a ton of those loose cartridges out there. Especially in Mexico. There's this guy uh, from uh, Mexico. He, he actually runs a business where he pays people to go to, like, garbage picking goes to dumps and they go through the, the garbage down there I guess a lot of our stuff when it was thrown out used to get shipped to Mexico to get dumped he's got I mean he's got like hundreds of friggin cartridges some of them in the box loose manuals you know he, he they're not in the best some of them are not in the best of shape but some of those games are, are, are scarce he's making a killing uh I won't buy nothing from him uh I think he's from Mexico or Venezuela, somewhere down in South America, Central America way. And uh, 
I mean, he's, he's just it's just crazy with all the older systems and games he's got. He's always posted on the Atari collector's page. And I'm like, well, you're, you're able to get them. They can't be, you know, to me, they're not that scarce then. Um, and plus, a lot of the games, I pretty much just want... Well, I know I want River Raid 2. I want King Kong. Uh, Flash Gordon. I'm trying to think of what other games that are movie-based that I don't have. Because I, I got Alien. I just need the manual for it. I got Porky's. And I got the manual for that. Uh, I need the Star Wars arcade game. And I, got, I want that on all the systems. Because I love Star Wars. Well, I love the original trilogy, I should say. The first release. Not Lucas's constantly keep changing it over the years. Trying to find an original release of Star Wars uh, is crazy because there's not even one in the American film archives. Because Lewis, uh, Lucas never sent the copy in when they requested it. Which is sad. You know, they got The Godfather, they got, you know, all these great American movies from American directors and they don't have Star Wars. He, they were gonna get. They, Lucas wanted to put the special edition. And I'm like, no, that's not the one that came out in '77. You know, 30 years from now, you can actually say, hey, here, here's a remastered version, special edition. Because I'm still waiting for Lucas to come out with uh, special and come out with the master master edition, or Disney come out with the master edition, where they actually have the original opening scene with Luke talking to his buddies on, you know, Bruce the the, the dark whatever his name is, dark lighter who's only in the original movie at the end and all gets blown up. Uh, originally in the original cut, and if you look at some of the older trading cards, there are uh, a couple of them where you see them on top of the roof. That scene was never put in Star Wars, and I was like, okay. That's like uh, back between Star Wars and Empire when they were talking the, the Boba Fett mail away. I always wondered why, you know, Boba Fett, yeah, he was a cartoon in the thing, but I was always wondering why, you know, they had him, yeah, because he was cut out of the original, the original movie. So I was like, oh, that's, you know, he was a cool character. A lot of, the, uh, I just, I just don't like uh, a lot of the stuff they're doing with the new trilogy and doing it, redoing the expanding. I just wish the hell Lucas never sold the thing. Just like J.J. Abrams, wish he never touched Star Trek. Uh, and there's like, oh, well, you know, that's your... There should be things that should never be touched. You know, or if you're going to do it, redo a whole brand new reboot. Don't take a universe and change it. If you were going to do, if you're going to change Star Wars canon, create a new, spe new universe of Star Wars. That was... Earth, you know, Earth Universe 1, this is Universe 2, it's a different universe. You can do whatever you want. Because it's, like, ridiculous. Uh, I just read an article yesterday about, I forgot what the guy's name was, but somebody asked him about um, race appropriations, about how, why are they always taking a white character and turning him into an African American, another, you know, an Asian, a Mexican, but you don't ever, you know, you don't ever see, you know, them taking... And any other buddy and turning him into somebody else. That's, you know. And I'm like, well, that, you know, it's okay, you know. He goes, but, you know, he goes, it's wrong. Because uh, if they did, they should actually do it. Because he says most. I read the article, and the article was really, really well written and really well to the point of what the guy was trying to say. He was like, most of the time when they do that, and they do have a black character, or they always bring it about race or discrimination. They never, you know, do a good job, especially uh, they were talking about how in Africa how they never, you know, they always say you know the the whole diversity of the African continent because the, the guy who asked him the question was from South Africa and he's like you know, was saying about uh, I forgot who the hell was I wish the hell I had the article in front of me but he was talking about how you have in Africa, it's not they all speak, you know, one country. He goes, he goes, you can walk a mile down the road and they have a different language, different culture. He goes, but that's never, that's never ever brought about. You know, they, they just, you know, 
blanket the whole thing as one thing, and it's not. And he goes, he goes, it demeans the whole thing. He goes, just like, okay, just like we're, I'm white. My parents are Italian descent, my dad's side, my mom's side, Ukrainian Russian. Now, if you know anything about different cultures, but see, they lump them all in white. And I don't agree with that because back in the day, there was discrimination just based on your ethnicity or even the side of the tracks you were born on. This whole stuff about BLM, you know, uh, you know, you know, cops, it it's polarizing. It used to be, I always said years, I used to always said to everybody, I go, United States, and same thing. It was a melting pot. Everybody came to the United States. They learned, but then when they decided to to split the language, where you can still speak Spanish and English, there's a divide. Then you have everybody keeping their nationalities. That's a division. You have the color division. You have the social economic division. There's nothing united about the, our our country. Everything is divided. Educational background. People fight over which comic books are better. Marvel, DC, Image. Craziness. What football team you like. What baseball team you like. I really think... You know, somebody wrote um, somewhere, and I, and I have always been saying this, hate's inherent. There are, somebody's going to always find a way to hate you for something. Or dislike you, or mock you, or criticize you. You know, just like this whole thing, uh, uh, my buddy Lou sent me a message because his father works for the Topps Chewing Gum Company, and the Topps was sold. Uh, and the company um, got the rights to do baseball cards. And I'm like, well, you know what? I said to my buddy, I said, you know what? Card comics, card collectors, card, nothing's for kids. Nothing's for the general public anymore. Everything's focused. And to me, eventually they're going to price themselves out of business. Because you you keep catering to a certain percentage of the population instead of all the population, you're actually cutting your own throat in the long run. The whole point of the is to get other collectors involved to make it you know, but they don't, and you're you're seeing it because you know they're always talking about DC's not doing good, Marvel's not, but they keep yanking the price up because these artists, the, these guys that run the place, they want big money. Like the CEO of Disney. I mean, when Michael Eisner had an, uh, uh, a thing with stock options, he made like $2 billion. I was like, crazy. Uh, then you go to Disney and you're, you're paying buku money for your family to go to... I mean... Like I said, the 20%, the, the people that can afford it, are, are basically just keeping everything afloat as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but eventually that's going to collapse. And I think you're starting to see that in the collectible market. Because even the toy companies, why are you doing, you know, tons of stuff, the same stuff? You go to the store, and it's always the same figures. Every time I go there, I'm like, don't even bother. I pick stuff up when I pick it up. Like, if I go for a Hot Wheels, if I can't get all six cars, I won't buy them. I just... Because there's, there's times, that the, the last set, uh, I think it was a 10-car set, they had seven or eight of them, and I'm like, nope, put them back. And I, I left them there, and I'm like, well, that's a set I won't get because I believe that when they do a toy run, they should have equal amounts of numbers of every figure. Don't short print one because the only people that are making money are the secondary collectors. They know people at the stores, they get them. They go to the thing and they jack the price up. Say the figure's ten bucks. They're selling it for forty dollars. And it's not really fair to toys or children's stuff. Kids' toys for kids. Cause like uh Keegan uh, when he was collecting Jurassic Park stuff, uh, he's like, Well, how come I can't how come we can't find this pop pop? Uh I forgot what dinosaur he wanted around Christmas. Not this Christmas, last Christmas. Christmas of uh, 2019. 
and I, I went and there was a there was a $30 dinosaur when it came out and eBay and uh, Amazon wanted like 90 to 100 dollars for it and I said you're not getting it I'm sorry but we, we can't afford paying that I, I would have bought it if it was like 40 50 bucks for him you know it was thirty dollars you know you know but uh, the sad thing is down the road, all that stuff drops in price because everything's hot for a certain amount of time and then it cools off. And then you notice Funko Pops, they go up, they go down. It, you know, and nobody can sit there and say, oh, it's not true. Try selling your stuff. Really just try selling your stuff. Stuff that's scarce will sell. And stuff that you have that you just enjoy collecting will just sit there. Comic book wise, nobody wants normal issues to fill in runs or gaps most of the time. They want keys. And I think that, that's that's the biggest joke. I uh because a key's only good as if somebody else wants it. You know, it's like, oh Gwen Stacy, oh Wow, Gwen she was a minor character. No, 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 she's a bigger and twenty years from now she'll be still be a you know, a minor character start in the in the Spider Man universe. Uh I mean Anytime something gets getting done, you know, for a comic or uh, a sports card, who's hot? Uh, Mike Greenwell rookie cards, I can remember at one point, were like $15 a card, right? Look them up now. I think they're 15 to 20 cents. Uh, he was a good ball player. Was the price inflated? Yeah. Most of most of the prices for cards are and comic books are. And I if I had to do it again, believe it or not, I actually would think about putting my money in a in a uh, mutual fund and doing it all and just the time money of time value of money, you know. Yeah, I sold a comic book once, oh I, I for thirty five bucks and I paid a dollar for it. Yeah. They're far and few in between, but I have freaking ten long boxes in my garage filled with comic books that I can't even I put up for a dollar and I can't get people in here because all people want are oh I want uh, Batman pre nineties I want eighties Batman and seventies Batman you're not gonna get them for a buck uh, if you do you're gonna be in crap condition uh, same thing with Spider Man's uh, X Men P that's what people want people want Good stuff, cheap. I'm gonna use Ollie's, you know, Ollie's bargain outlets thing, because I see people buying buying the hardcovers and stuff at Ollie's, and then going and putting it up on Facebook. Uh, like, I guess they get there when they open the thing, and there's every once in a while they'll have an omnibus, and I think at Ollie's there's like twenty bucks, and people are listing them on Facebook for a hundred bucks a book, and I'm like, I'll just wait, and I'll get lucky if I get them at Ollie's because. I just picked up, uh, if you saw a video a couple of times, I, I went to Ollie's, I picked up four more hardcovers. I'm I'm in no hurry. I figure if I get them, I get them. If not, it's it's no it's no skin on my back. Like I said, I don't buy nothing new. What's the point? $7 for a book, $5 for a book. Please. I feel sorry for the comic book shops that, that, get, that have to, you know, cover to have it. Just like eventually, if I do own a shop, I'll have to pay whatever it is to get these new books and I'll be like just shaking my head because I'll keep one issue for myself and maybe you know if I get the variants in I'll keep them for my collection but I plan I plan to just roll most of the stuff over Subscri subscription orders I'll have to find out what you know give a decent Discount because I, I know a lot of comic shops don't even give discounts for subscription buyers. And I and back in the day when I used to subscribe to the comic book shops, I used to get 20, 20 to forty percent off depending how much I bought, depending on the guy. And uh, they were when they were a dollar book. That's why I have as many books as I do because I lived at home. And I would buy every Marvel and that's what bothers me when I'm going through my collection from 1986 to 1990. That four years, I should have every Marvel and DC and Image comic book. And when I'm going through my collection and I'm missing books from that time period, I know they were taken and sold for drugs. So, or stolen from other people that came to my house. So it's like, you know, 
What are you going to do? You can't do nothing. It's the past. And you just got to deal with it. Uh, but... Also, too, uh, on New Year's, uh, my daughter's friend, was he ordered off of a site, one of the Iron Man helmets that you know, opens up with the lights and everything. Now, my ordering online, I'm one for four. And now, actually, one for five, because I can't count this, this sweater that my wife ordered it, not me. Even though I wanted it. Because uh, I only paid... I think 20 some dollars not even 30 bucks for this and uh, this is comfortable so it's nice and thick it's warm uh, hopefully one of my other videos I'll be wearing my green the Green Lantern shirt I got and uh, yesterday in the mail I got my Vampirilla t-shirt which I'm gonna sport that in one of my videos coming uh, that came from Poland and I ordered actually steel blue and the guy sent me goes I'm, so, I'm totally out of steel blue in your size and I told him, I said, uh, I went through the colors, because he had like six or seven different colors of the shirt. So I was like, okay, I want this color or this color. Surprise me. I ended up getting an, an olive color, like a military green. So I was like, okay. I, uh, yeah, this video is running a little bit long. I'm just rambling. Um. It's hard to... I actually should do bullet points when I do these videos so I can actually stay on topic. But yeah, I started, like, like I said, I don't know what's going to go on with this year. This year's sort of up in the air. Uh, a lot of stuff's uh, with this COVID. I mean, crazy. We're living in crazy, crazy times. Um, if I find that article from that... Because it was on Facebook pages, I saw it, and I just clicked on it, and I read it, and I was amazed. I mean, it was honest to good. It was a really, really good article. And uh, I'm actually uh, wondering why it popped, because it seems like, I, I swear to God, they, they do monitor us anymore. Because the other day I was on the phone with Anthony, and uh, we were talking about something. And after we hung up, an hour later, Anthony texts me. He goes, yo, bro, he goes, guess what popped up on my uh, phone? And it was exactly what we were talking about popped up as an interest for him to look at. And I was like, yeah, Big Brother's watching us. So stick it to the man, I guess. Because <laughs> I'm always saying about that that they shouldn't. But... We sign it to use Facebook and all these things. So, but that does it for this edition of King Joe's. And as always, I thank you guys for viewing and subscribing. King Joe out.